Lynch, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 72 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I am your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers out at Shared Legacy Farms in Elmore, Ohio, just outside of Toledo. I'm also the founder of My Digital Farmer, which is all about trying to help other CSA farmers master the art of messaging and sales. So getting confident that you know what you're doing when it comes to selling your products, not having to worry about, will I be able to sell my CSA year after year after year? That's what I'm all about coaching here on the podcast. Thanks for joining me. If you're here for the first time, I'd like to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. If you like this show at the end, write me a little rating or a review. That goes a long way. And tell a friend about it. I'm trying to make as many people aware as possible that this resource exists. It's free and it's helping a lot of other CSA farmers around the world get better at crafting their message and their sales. So tell other farmers about it. That's like probably the best thing that you can do for me. And to all my fans who tune in every week, a shout out to you once again. I hope you are coming out of the August burnout phase. I know that's always such a hard month for us. We're feeling it too. And I feel like we just need two more weeks and we're going to be hitting the home stretch. And so much of this is mental, isn't it? It's just, yes, it's physical. We're all exhausted too, but um, lack of sleep, but just a lot of mental toughness that's required right now. So I am wishing that your way. Today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 72, the number 72. I can't believe I am in my 72nd episode. That is insane. Wow. Lots of good stuff here. So today's topic is all about pricing, how to raise your prices in your CSA or in your product suite. And I thought this would be a timely episode right now because if you are like many farmers who have a CSA, you are actually starting to think about next year. I know that we are. We run a um, early bird sales sign-up registration period at the end of the season. So in October, I'm going to be giving my current members a chance to renew their membership. And I have to make decisions about what next year looks like in time for October. So my husband and I are starting to think about, well, what is the product suite going to look like for 2021? And if we want to raise the price, like we need to talk about that. We need to run some numbers. We need to th- ask ourselves, is this the right time? Is this the right energy? Um, Is this the right moment to do that? So if you aren't having those conversations, if you're like, you know, a first time CSA and it hasn't occurred to you that you need to be thinking about this now, I think this might be a really timely podcast episode. One of the questions that I feel like comes up a lot in my Facebook group for farmers, where we talk all about marketing You can do a search for that, by the way. Just look for a CSA Marketing Discussion Group and you'll find it and um, request access and I'll probably let you in. Um, And one of the things that comes up from time to time is just, hey, I want to raise my price or what are you guys charging for your CSA? And just not, not being really sure about what you should be charging and part of you is probably wishing you could charge more, but not knowing, hey, is this appropriate? How do I go about doing that? You don't want to look like you're slimy or greedy. And so what's an appropriate way to go about asking people to pay more for your product? How do you announce that? How do you spring that on your audience? And if you are like most farmers, anytime you think about raising your price, it's with trepidation, it's with fear and anxiety because we worry, what are our customers going to think? Are they going to feel offended? Are they going to feel like we're greedy? Are they going to turn their backs on us and leave us? And it just makes a lot of us hit the pause button and not take the leap and even try it. And then we get stuck in a situation where year after year, we are pricing our product at a lower rate than it really should be. And we're not being compensated for the work that we're doing. And I don't know about you, but times like this, like the end of August when I have hit the wall and I'm really, really tired, 
you know, I can start to feel resentful and think, man, you know, I'm not getting paid enough for the work that I do. And if that's, you know, how you're feeling, then I want you to just take a look at yourself real, just look in the mirror today. And I want you to say, okay, who's in charge of pricing your product? And it's you, you have the power to do that. So if you are experiencing that resentment and that, man, I wish I could raise it, you are the one that can change that. You are the only one that can change that. And sometimes that requires a little bit of a mindset shift to be in the right space, to be willing to even go for it. So before I share with you some different ways that you can talk about raising your prices, there's kind of a way that you can position it and message it. I just want to talk you through a few examples of how do you know if maybe it's time to raise your prices in the first place. So if you are a beef producer or if you um, are selling uh, chicken bundles or maybe you're a flower CSA or you're a vegetable or a fruit CSA, okay, you've got a larger ticket priced item and you want to jack that price up a bit. Like what, what does that look like and when is it time to do that? So first of all, I want to say if you are selling out, like if your product is sold out, your price is probably too low. I want you to think about that for a minute. Now, this, this applies to CSAs, but it also applies to all you market gardeners. If you are taking stuff to the market and you sell out of those carrots in two hours or 45 minutes, and then you sit there for another four hours trying to sell your other stuff, then your carrots are probably priced too low. You could price them a little bit higher. And the goal is to be able to walk away at the time that you leave and you still maybe have like one left, right? Um, and it's the same with the CSA product. If you are like most CSAs right now, you are getting slammed. You are getting a ton of interest. There is a high demand for this product right now with COVID-19 going on and everyone's fear of not being able to access healthy food or just that security that people are looking for. They want that transparency piece now more than ever that I'm going to go right to the source and get my food. I know it's safe. I know it's clean. I know who's growing it for me. Okay. That is meeting a special need that people have right now that is very, very poignant, very real for them. And so we're experiencing high, high demand. So if you are selling out and it is not hard for you to sell your product right now, your CSA, then that is a sign that you can actually raise the price and not feel weird about it because we are in a market situation right now where supply and demand forces are at play. I'm thinking right now about the canning jar epidemic. So I don't know if you've got this in your region, but I know out here in Ohio, people are posting all over social media that they can't find canning jars. They can't find lids. And you go to all the different stores around town. Gosh, we even went into like, heard we some of our customers even went into Amish country, which is like, you always find canning stuff there. And even they are sold out. And so because of that, the few places that do have canning jars and even Amazon, if you go there, they've jacked the prices up higher because of the law of supply and demand. So I want you to take that to heart, you guys. This is the season right now when people are in like going crazy for our products when it is absolutely okay to raise your price a bit and no one is going to freak out on you. They're going to completely understand. Now, another moment where you might say, okay, it's time to raise my prices is if you're losing money, okay? So if your expenses are exceeding your income and you do the math, that is a sign that you are not charging enough. You're either not charging enough or you have too many expenses. So in many cases, what I tell people is like, hey, you might want to raise that price just a little bit and see if that helps the numbers. And this is hard. This is so hard. So many of us farmers, I feel like we're in this trap, this mindset trap that we think we're not supposed to make a lot of money. We're not supposed to be able to earn a fair wage. And I want to push back on that. And I want you to really value what you bring to society, what your product is, what your time is, the amount of physical effort it takes to do what you do, the amount of mental and, um, just the intelligence, like the knowledge that you have inside your head that no one else has. Like if the farmers of the world disappeared in one quick swoop, we would be in trouble as a, as a world economy because people do not know how to grow food from soil. 
you have this special knowledge and this is worth something. This is worth something. So don't downplay what you are worth and charge for what you are worth. Another moment where you might consider raising your prices is if you take a look at your competition. So I think it's wise to survey the farms around your area and know what it is that they are charging for similar services. And I'm not saying that you have to meet their price or beat their price, but you should be aware of what it is, okay? Because you want to be somewhere in that vicinity. If you are way below or way above, then you're obviously a little off. So just pay attention to what your competitors are doing. And if they are a lot higher than you, then that may be a sign that you should raise your prices to get a little bit more um, in the market zone. And then finally, this is a big one. You should consider raising your prices if the transformation that your your, your customer goes through after using your product is significant. So I always talk about, you know, when you decide how to price a product, you want to look at what what is the problem that this product solves for your customer. Why are they buying it from you? And what is their life like before they start using your product? And what is it like after they're really entrenched in using your product and loving it? The gap between those two points, the larger it is and the harder it is to get over that gap, the more you can charge. So in our case, for our CSA, you know, becoming a great CSA member, like really mastering the box and learning how to use what's in there every week and not wasting your food. That's not something that comes easy to people right away, is it? That's one of the reasons why there's uh, typically a lower retention rate with this product because many people have great intentions. They jump into this and then they don't know how to actually use the food and they feel guilty and then they don't come back again. But one of the things that we've overcome as a CSA is that problem. We have an amazing support group and a a training program that orienteers them into the tribe and that teaches them the most important things they need to know and shows them the finish line, kind of future uh, paces it for them and says, hey, you know what, two to three years from now, this is what you're going to look like. They're seeing posts in the Facebook group from other members who have turned into these maestros in the kitchen. And they can see that and they can imagine that could be me someday. All right. And so that's what they want. They want that life. And you don't, you don't get that unless you have the support system and the training that we provide in the CSA. That is a huge part of the solution. And so because that gap from before and after stays is pretty large, you don't jump over that unless you get that support piece and we provide it, we can charge more because that's hard to get. Like you don't just go shop at Kroger and turn into this maestro, right? You need the support group of the CSA members and all these foodies who are teaching you how to try new things and take risks in the kitchen. And so that's one of the reasons why I don't feel guilty about pricing my product. When you do the math and you add up all the vegetables in the box from week to week, Does it add up to $430 divided by 18? No, it does not. It's lower. Like our product value, the vegetable value is not that number. But we also provide that life transformation piece. And so that's that's what the other price represents, the rest of that price. Okay. And I don't feel bad about that at all because the other things that come with the package, that life transformation is what people are paying for. Okay, so think, just kind of consider that if you, if your product is really changing lives and bringing great joy and happiness and growth to your customers, that has value and that might be a reason you can raise your price. Okay, so I just walked you through some things to kind of watch out for, like warning flags that say, hey, it might be time for a price change. Let's talk now about how you actually raise your price. And these are just different suggestions. I'm not saying you have to do them all. I want you to listen to them and pick out, maybe there's one or two that you feel comfortable with. You're like, you know what, that makes sense. I think in this season and in this time, I can go for that, okay? So in no particular order, I was just kind of writing down some ideas that came to me. Here's what I am gonna suggest. So the first Um, way that you might increase your revenue or increase your income, your price, is to add fees. Now, I know some of you already do this, but this is a common thing that you see done, not just in our farming industry, but in other industries. So perhaps it's a um, delivery fee 
or like I know my waste management service when they drop off the porta potty every week or like come and clean the porta potty week and I see the um the bill it always says fuel surcharge and I get charged like an extra six dollars for the fuel maybe you allow people to use credit cards and you are now eating that fee and you want to find a way to make that back up you could come up with some kind of a surcharge in some states that allow you to make up that difference another kind of just random idea that I thought of was Right now, I just feel like we are using a ton of extra plastic because of COVID-19. And it has occurred to me to somehow uh, add that on as a small surcharge fee for next season, if this continues, to just say, hey, you know what, this is going to help us cover the cost of buying those plastic totes that are reusable for all of you so that we don't have to keep using plastic bags. Or um, this is going to cover the cost of the extra plastic bags that we don't usually use in the normal season to keep you guys all safe, right? And so just naming it, giving it some kind of a branded name. But that would be an example of getting a small extra uh, price increase by just adding a, a fee that makes sense for a service that you're providing. Okay, that was number one. Number two, you could keep your current customers locked in at the price that you've had in the past. Okay, so kind of grandfather them in. But then Anyone who joins in the future is now going to come in at a higher rate. This is another way that you can make income. And it makes the current customers feel special. They don't necessarily feel that pain of the price increase. And you send a signal that I really value you and I appreciate you and your loyalty. So you can create some kind of a sentence, you know, that says, hey, because you are a returning member and you've been with us for a long time, your price is going to remain the same for the next 12 months. And we'll be raising the price for any new customers that come into our CSA. Now, when you put that little caveat or that little sentence out to the world, I recommend that you not promise that you're going to grandfather them in at this rate forever. That locks you into a commitment that you may regret someday. So, you know, making it open-ended like, I'm going to keep this price locked in here for you for 12 months. That gives you a way out so that you can also raise the price on them if you need to the following year. All right, let's move on to the third idea for how you can raise your price. Add value to your offer. Now, I spend a lot of time talking about this with um, CSA farmers who are trying to get better at or learn how to do an early bird campaign. But you need to create an offer. You can't just put your your CSA price tag out there and say, buy my CSA share. Here's the new price. Here's the place to go. When you create an early bird offer, you're building an offer, not just here's my product bundle, but all the other features that come along with it. And maybe you've got a bonus that's attached to it, right? So you want to add special value to that overall package. So maybe you create a product bundle that adds a service. Maybe that service has always been there, but no one really knows about it. And you're going to point it out as a special feature. And that feature or that service, by adding it to your package doesn't really hurt your overall profit margin. So I'm trying to think of a few examples here to to help you see what I mean. These aren't the best examples. You you need to brainstorm a little bit. But for example, for us, when we talk about our product and describe the product, the CSA membership, we might say something like, hey, when you join, you get access to our Facebook group, which is what takes you to the finish line, which is what does the transformation and gets you to become a really awesome food. You're going to get access to all these amazing people who are your peeps, who think like you, who love to cook in the kitchen. You're also going to get access to a dietitian, Katie Jardin, who's my community manager, and she'll be able to coach you with some of your questions. Okay, you'll be able to get bulk pricing when we have bulk produce. I will give you a special offer at the bulk price only for my CSA members. You could say something like that. Okay, do you see how putting all these bullets to your offer now suddenly ratchets up the value? You're not just getting the vegetable box itself. You're getting all these other things that have monetary value. And this then allows you to raise the price. This was one of the main reasons that three years ago, I significantly ratcheted up my CSA membership price because of the Facebook group uh, element. When we added on all those other features, I've talked a lot about it in other podcasts. It's kind of what I'm known for. 
we started doing the weekly unboxings and we did video tutorials for every vegetable and we had a, a veggie ebook for every vegetable. We had tutorials on video for different exit strategies for dealing with overwhelm, you know, pepper overwhelm, tomato overwhelm. We taught them all these different skill sets and then we locked them inside of the membership academy where all of our CSC members get access to that huge resource. So if they ever want to know how to, you know, roast peppers and then put them in a vinegar salt brine uh, to store in their fridge for eight months, like that is a super awesome exit strategy that I'm teaching right now. And that video and that training is in the academy. And I just tell them, here's the link to that video. Go into the academy, watch it. And that's part of their membership. So when we added that feature in, you know, we started just creating all this content and then I had all this information that I needed to put somewhere. I said, you know what? I can, I can now really guide someone through this process. I am a tour guide now and I have the resources. I didn't have that three years ago. This is a much different CSA experience than it was when we started. And I felt really confident as a result of to raise the price. I think I raised it like 20 or 30 bucks in one year. And I said, you're getting access to the Academy. I'm taking all that stuff that I showed you last year in snippets and now it's in one spot and you get access to it. And nobody said a thing. Nobody said a thing. And I felt totally justified uh, because I had added this key feature that added value, major value to the offer. Can you imagine, especially if you're a brand new CSA member coming into that kind of a CSA that pretty much has a roadmap for you so you don't feel lost, that has a coach standing by in the Facebook group and has a huge group of people very engaged in that Facebook group who are also mentoring you along the way so that as you ask questions, you get them answered. Um, you can go in there and see people posting ideas that just get your mind spinning and help you see what's possible. Like that kind of stuff is what moves people forward and gets them excited, right? So that's um, tip number three is just to add some value to your offer, add an additional feature or point out a particular feature. Maybe it's access to you in some capacity or some kind of a special event that you're going to offer them. Okay, let's move on to number four. This is sort of similar to number three, but I want to give it its own bullet point. You can also raise your price by adding on an awesome bonus. So we talk a lot about this in, um, in my course, How to Build um, an Early Bird Campaign. And when you create an amazing bonus to add on to that offer, sometimes people will like jump on that offer because they want the bonus. And if your bonus is worth money, you can build that into the price of the product. It gives you an excuse to raise the product's price. So if you're creative about what can that bonus be, if that, like in our case, sometimes we've done digital downloads where one year I had a um, compilation of all the recipes that have been shared in our private Facebook group by the members, and it was like a scrapbook of the whole experience that year. And a lot of people were excited to get that. That took me quite a while to compile and put it together. It was nothing beautiful looking. It was just all these recipes listed, you know, one page each, and then a nice cover picture on the front as a PDF, and that's what they got. But it was organized. There was a table of contents and so forth, an index by recipe and by vegetable. And people really loved getting that, and that had value to them. Okay, so that was also a year that I raised the price. And people are excited about getting their hands on that bonus. So that's another way to justify a price increase or it takes the edge off the price increase if you have an attractive bonus as part of your offer. Number five, let's move on. You can raise products on some of your products in your product suite, but not on others. So don't feel like you have, you've got to do it across the board. Maybe just the ones that are really popular, the ones that everyone loves, that you know you have high demand for, those are the ones that you raise the price on and the rest stay the same. Again, takes the edge off. So if a customer is in your CSA and all the other uh, add-on shares remain the same price, but the vegetable one goes up, that's not as hard to take as everything going up. Number six create a lesser option for customers who don't want to pay the higher price. What do I mean by that? So sometimes when we raise the price of a CSA membership and it now becomes out of the price range of someone who used to be a member and they're like, oh shoot, like that just feels a little too high for me. One of the ways to soften the blow is to create an alternative product 
that's very similar to the original one, but maybe it's just a little bit shorter. Maybe it's only six weeks or maybe it's the sampler concept, like a four week share and the price point is therefore lower and then they can suddenly justify it in their mind. Or maybe it's like, okay, I'm going to now change my share so so that if you want to have lettuce, we're going to have a lettuce add-on share. So you're not going to get lettuce in your normal share. If you want to get lettuce, you got to buy this additional package. That's a way for you to kind of create a price change. And now the person's like, oh man, that's that's too much. And then you can say, well, this, there's also a lower price package without the lettuce. You could take this one instead. And now your customer might say, well, I can do that one instead. Okay. So if you have multiple options at different price points, um, even if that means that you have to move your product suite around a little bit or add a different kind of product, that can also work. So get creative. That lettuce add-on share is a great example, by the way. So of, of, um, like pulling out a product that's already in your current product suite. So we have lettuce in our CSA right now, right? It comes in the box when we have it. But you could theoretically um, split it off and take one of those products out and just say, this is going to no longer be in the base share. And if you want a lot of lettuce, if you're a lettuce aficionado, now you're going to pay extra for a lettuce share that will be on these weeks and these weeks. And maybe at the end of the day, you actually end up making more money. Number seven, provide increased access to you or something else. So this is also a little bit like um, number three, where we added value to the offer itself, where we created features. Here's a couple of ways you can think about that. So maybe you're going to create a new feature in your membership where people will get increased access to you, the farmer. So maybe you're going to have a special event at your farm or a private dinner for 10 people at a time that people can come to your house and have one-on-one time and rub shoulders with the farmer. Or maybe you'll do some kind of a whiskey tasting event for your people who buy at this product level. And that gives them a chance to come and actually hang out with you, the farmer. Maybe it's access to some of your affiliates or your add-on share folks. So we have a great relationship with several other farms who provide like our fruit share and our milk share, um, our cheese share. So we could say something like, well, you get access to Knievan Creamery and maybe they have some kind of a special bonus or a price discount or a coupon code that they can provide our members if you're a member of our CSA yeah, we're going to raise our overall price, but in return, you're going to get 5% off anytime you buy from Knievan Creamery, okay? Like you could negotiate some kind of relationship like that. In some cases, I think people will choose one CSA over the other based on the add-on shares that are provided. And the fact that we are aligned with Knievan Creamery, which is a really elite dairy out here, like that makes someone go, oh, wow, I can get stuff like really cool stuff from Knievan every week and pick it up with my box. Like, sign me up. That sounds really awesome. I'd love to get stuff from Knievan too. So looking at how can you create relationships with some of those affiliate uh, partners, and then that can also justify a price increase. The very fact that you are now giving a shortcut access to your customers to some of those elite vendors can give you, kind of justify why you might raise a price. Okay, I've got a couple more. Number eight, I want you to think about positioning your price, positioning your price. So it's not just about what you set the price as, but how you position that price in your messaging. So one of the ways that this is often done is there will be usually three different price levels posted on a website. If you've ever um, shopped for software, this is often very common where they'll have the beginner, like the beginner rate, and then there's the professional rate, and then there's the, you know, the advanced professional rate. I forget what they call that. And they list all three of the monthly prices there. And the one over on the right, the super advanced version of the software is really, really high. And I just go, oh my gosh, no way. I'm not even going to think about that. But then when I see the one in the middle and the other one on the left, Suddenly those prices, even though they're still high, they don't seem so high because I've seen the one over on the right that's really, really expensive. That's an example of positioning the price. So if you can create different types of bundles in your product suite 
and then position them in the pricing section, have a very expensive one, but then also have a couple of other ones that are not as expensive, those suddenly don't seem so much because they've, they've already seen the really expensive one. I hope that makes sense. But that is another way to kind of raise your price um, and then just position it next to some other types of products that look a lot more. And the psychological factor then kind of kicks in for a customer. They see that and it's a little bit easier for them to take in comparison to the other number that they just looked at. All right, my last idea that I came up with, number nine, is to bundle your services. And I didn't do this until a few years ago, surprisingly. I just sort of had each individual product, the fruit share, the vegetable share, the cheese share, they were each their their own item in the store and people just added them to their cart and built their own package. But you could create a bundle, a recommended bundle already. So you could make a fruit and veggie bundle. And when somebody grabs that product, it's a slight discount because they're getting them together. And the reason you might do this is because it can, um, in theory, encourage more people then to buy that product. So if they see these, these two items that they're getting a discount for, compared to if they bought them a la carte, it might make them say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get that other thing too now. And now they've spent more money with you. It's increased the average order value in your cart. Okay. So that's how you end up increasing your profits. So even though you might change the price there a little bit, you're going to, they're going to end up spending more money with you and you're going to end up being ahead. So that's kind of another way that you can end up increasing your income, um, playing around with price there by just bundling the services. Um, in the meantime, you could raise the price of your items a la carte to the price you really want and then keep the, the price you currently have as the price if things were bundled. All right. Again, it's a psychological factor for your customer because they see that, oh, if I just do this, I'll have the same price as last year. All right. There you have it. That's nine different ways of spinning this particular beast. Uh, if you are struggling with how do I raise my price, maybe one of these seems like something that you could try that would take the edge off of it for you. Before I let you go, I do just want to leave you with some words of advice, though. If you are going to raise your price, um, be honest about it and don't be embarrassed or feel like you have to over explain. Like, listen, you run a business and you need to make money. That's why you're here. And most people who've joined a CSA want farmers to succeed. They believe in the local farmer. They probably already think that you're not being paid enough. And they want to support you financially. So raising the price a little bit is not going to super upset them. All right. They're, they want to help you get to success. So if you need to raise the price, just be honest about it and let them know up front. So talk about rising costs. Talk about the situation that's going on right now and explain it. All right. Um, but number one, just be honest. I also think it's good practice to thank your customers before you announce the price increase. So just let them know that you're grateful for their loyalty to you all these years, that you appreciate them, then explain to them, you know, why you've had to raise the price and that you know that they're going to stand behind you because they believe in the local farm and keeping the local farms in business. Finally, I want you to think about timing. So when do you actually announce this price increase? There is probably a better and a worse time to do this. And I think the ideal time to tell people that you're going to raise your price is when your customers already love you. Okay, so in the heat of the season right now, if you're having killer awesome boxes, then you want to make sure you have killer awesome boxes for maybe the next few weeks. And then as you start to talk about your prices for next year, if you're going to do early bird, then you start talking about how we're going to raise the price. Okay. So come out of a period of abundance, out of a period of success. That's the ideal time to announce a price increase. When things are going well, when the, the, the last memory that someone has of their CSA membership experience of the last box was a positive one, then they're going to be like, oh man, I've been loving this. Yeah, it totally makes sense. You should raise the price. This is awesome. This is totally worth it. Okay. So if you are coming out of a time of scarcity or you feel like you're on the downslide and there's lots of negative energy 
and nobody's really liking your box, like that's not the best time to try and pull off this strategy. Okay, it's going to be, I guess what I'm saying is you may still have to do it, but you're, it's going to be more difficult for you. So just start talking about it early, as early as possible. Don't just throw it on the website one day and they show up to sign up for Early Bird and there it is and they're in shock. You need to kind of warn them if this is going to happen and thank them for their generosity, be upfront, talk about why, and just stand with confidence. Hold your head up high and you know make eye contact and explain to them this is why and be proud of what you do. You guys, you're worth it. You're worth it. I work with my husband who works so hard every day. I I watch him physically expend himself. And I think to myself, man, people have no idea. The average person has no idea how much we as farmers work. No idea. And that just makes me appreciate the work that's coming from him, the labor of his hands. And to me, I value it so much more highly. So to believe in yourself, you are worth this and you need to educate your people and explain to them what you need from them. And if it's a price increase, it's going to help you feel better (laughs) about what you're doing every day, then you need to do that for yourself. All right, my friends, so that's all I've got today. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have one idea. If you want to raise your price this year, I say in the season of COVID, go for it. This is the ideal time to to lean into that and to explain why. People will support us. So if it's something that you need, don't be afraid to go for it. I mentioned earlier my CSA Academy, the resource that my CSA members get into for free that houses all of my video tutorials and veggie ebooks and the roadmap to CSA success. If you want to get your hands on that, if you want to be able to get inside that academy and take a look around, see those resources, download them, and kind of use them as guides to help you build your own version of that. And just to see what is it that she's even teaching and how is she putting that together, you guys can get into that academy. It's a monthly membership. I have a lot of farmers that do that for inspiration. You can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy to join at a monthly rate. You can cancel anytime. And if you just in there for like a month or two, it would be totally worth it. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button, leave me a rating or a review. And if you have an idea for a podcast guest, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at Corinna at mydigitalfarmer.com. All right, that's all I got. I will catch you next week for another episode. Until then, have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye.